quite hard to follow the great musicians and the great artists, but I'll do, uh, I'll do my very best. Look, there's a lot of people out there that will tell you stories about how to make other people change. There's a huge industry on how to kind of change yourself, right? I want to talk to you today about how you can be better at change, right? How to maximize your chances of being an adaptable person, right? Before we start, everybody wake up. I'm going to conduct a little poll, a little light poll. I hope no one's like this in the library here. But let's have a show of hands. How many of you guys spend time focusing on your academic capabilities? Get those hands up. <laughs> OK, right. Next, next. How many, of you how many of you people focus time on your physical health and fitness? It's uh, Not bad, not bad, not bad. Next. How many of you wake up every morning and ask yourself, am I an adaptable person? We've got two guys, three guys. They rapidly put their hands down. This is my assertion, right, from my very modest experience, that in addition to focusing on your mental health, your academic capability, your physical fitness, the big third one is figuring out how to be adaptable, how to discover your inner Arctic fox, who, as you all will know, is white in winter and brown in the summer. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Why is that a good idea? You guys know this better than me, because the world is changing, right? There, are, there is a convergence of forces happening now which is unparalleled in the history of the world, whether it's VR, whether it's robotics, whether it's industrial outsourcing, whether it's the codification of knowledge. Things are changing. My assertion, with the greatest of respect to lawyers and accountants in this room, is the world is producing enough lawyers and accountants. The world is looking for people that can adapt. What does adaptability mean? The root of the word adaptability comes from the Latin aptus. Anyone know what aptus means? No Latin scholars in here? Aptus means to fit, right? To fit. To fit in, to fit yourself, to mold yourself. And the people who adapt the most are the fittest, the aptissimus, right? The, apt the aptissimus. So then the question is, how do you become aptissimus? How do you maximize your chances of being aptissimus? I'm going to give you four areas that you might want to think about um, as you move into the state of being adaptable. The first one is, is be different, right? Be different. Think about whether you're the black sheep or the white sheep. Why is this important? Very simple, because the underpinning of being able to change is accepting that you're different. If you're different, you're going to find it so much easier to change, right? When I was at your stage in college, when I look back, honestly, I regret some of the times when I moved with the pack. I regret the times that I didn't seek out the misfits. Don't make the same mistake. Seek out the loners. Seek out the misfits. Discover how to be different, how not to be part of the flock. Mark Zuckerberg's not part of the flock. Richard Branson's dyslexic. These are very different people, right? How do you become different? So every time I talk about these four ideas, I'll have an idea, and I'll end with just a practical thought on how you might be different, which is a difficult thing. I think it, back up, back up, back up. I think it comes down to one thing. Ask yourself, do you think for yourself? Do you really think for yourself? The courses that people go through at school and college have, a, have the effect of creating conventionality. But ultimately, in the world of change, it comes down to your ability to think for yourself. 
Idea number two, be interesting, be interesting. This is an interesting guy. This is Jean Cocteau, an artist, a poet, a ballet scene designer, a boxing manager. This was the man of whom it was said, for him, every great verse of poetry is a sunrise, every sunset is the foundation of the heavenly kingdom. Imagine being able to think that way. Why is it important to be interesting? Frankly and very simply, because it maximizes your options. It allows you to see things from different angles. It prevents you from being binary. Become polymaths. It's more interesting. Don't make the choice. Don't answer the first job application from Goldman Sachs or KPMG. Keep your options open. Think of the great polymaths. Think of Navinda Tagore. Think of Leonardo. If you don't like thinking of them, think of, think of David Bowie. If you're very young, think of Victoria Beckham. These are all interesting people. Yeah? How do you become interesting? Frankly, my advice to everyone here is have hobbies. Have hobbies. My big hobby is gardening, right? Gardening has absolutely nothing to do with my working life but it's a great salvation, and I tap into the ideas of other people. So get hobbies, right? I'm becoming very pompous and wise in my old age, as you've probably noticed. Number three, be brave, right? Be brave, that's the hardest, hardest thing of all, and it's very easy to talk about. Um, that's the, as everyone will know here, the Paramvir Chakra, the equivalent of the Legion d'Honneur, the Victoria Cross, the Silver Star, right? How do, you, how do you become brave? Why is brave being important? Is important? It's important, very simply, going back to the forces of conventionality. Because if you want to change and if you want to be different, you're going upstream when everyone else is going downstream, right? Now, how do you become brave? That's a very abstract, very difficult thing. It's the hardest thing of the four items I'm talking about. My advice to everyone here, again, based on my modest experience, is really two things. The first one is start early, right? Looking at the faces in the room, you guys are at the early stage, right? The earlier you start to be brave, the braver you'll be. The second thing, and it's a very simple thing that I've learned, is it's easier to be brave in groups, to be bold in groups. It's safer, you feel more secure, you get support. So seek out those groups, be brave together. The last of the four, have charm. Have charm, be personable. This is a, a shamrock, an Irish symbol of charm, a lucky charm. Why is this important? Frankly, because the people that have charm and who are personable get a lot of breaks, right? It's tough to go out there and adapt. Underwrite yourself by having charm, being personable, working on your manners, all the old-fashioned things, right? Um, look at Muhammad Ali. Look at the current Pope Francis. Look how they radiate personability. How do you do this? My simple advice to you guys is less time in the library, less time in your tutorials, more time in the pubs and cafes, right? When it comes down to it, being a good guy, being a communicator, being personable will get you through most of life. I'm in the home straight now. Be the black sheep. Discover your inner Jean Cocteau. Aim for the award of valor and find your charm. What's the reward of this? The reward of this is an increase in your ability to be adaptable, to change, right? To maximize your chances of being the person that can react as the world gets disrupted. As we know, it is getting disrupted. What's the reward of that? And this is very, very important because adaptability is not abstract in my opinion in this sense. The reward of be 
being aptissimus, being the adaptable person, is freedom. Yeah? These are my children, Elsa and Cecilia, who've been kind enough to drag themselves away from their iPads uh, and join us today with my wife, Megan. This is them running free on the Atlantic coast of the west of Ireland, right? And I thought about this, and I thought, why do we want to be adaptable? And ultimately, when I thought about it, it's because it will allow us to get into a position where we can remember the freedom of all freedoms, which is the freedom of our childhood, our ability to run wild in the west coast of Ireland. And that freedom is, in my opinion, what it ends up being all about, right? Let me, um, let me stay on Ireland and end with some words of encouragement for all of us with a, with a, a very Irish um, invocation. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft in your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you.